Are you struggling with somebody who you have a conflict with? Is there a disagreement or a strife that's been between the two of you or a group of people possibly that are just not coming together and this has really been a challenge for you? Is this conflict or this strife actually created a lot of challenges in you trying to move forward in certain parts of your life or to deal with a particular issue? If you answered yes to any one of those statements, then you are in the right place. This video is for you. Hi friend, my name is Bernie from Tiger Resilience, where we offer addiction solutions for family members and friends who have a loved one struggling with addiction challenges, as well as helping the person with the addiction challenges. So let me, let's get right into this. And I'd first like to preface myself to at least qualify. I've been in a behavioral health business for 30 years, working both as a clinician therapist, as a program director and a clinical director. So I have a multitude of years of experience working very much so specifically with this issue, conflict and anger management. And it's a very particular issue because it's something that I think involves all of us at one time or another, if not consistently through our lives. So let's kind of break this down first. Well, let's define what is a conflict? Well, a conflict simply stated is an opposing idea or an interest or opposing forces where one is pushing against the other. There's not an agreement, there's an issue, and no one is learning how to speak with each other. And this is, comes back down to one of the key areas of challenges we have today in our world, and that is the challenge of communication, or I should say lack thereof. Here at Tiger Resilience, we actually have an online course called Unlocking Hope. And it's about developing effective communications and engaging communications with each other, specifically around family members and all relationships, but also particularly around challenges with addiction. But let's get back into the conflict resolution. So if we have opposing forces and two, two heads are coming together and we can't seem to find that common ground, well, what are the things that we need to do? First, very important. Number one is that you do not just immediately respond. If something is coming at you, if there's a question or if it's being approached to you, this conflict, this particular uh, interest that you're not aligned with is not to respond right away. I call it my five second golden rule. And that is basically to stand back for a moment and give yourself a little bit of a break. That five seconds is just to process, what does this really mean to me? If it means anything at all, do I need to respond to this, right? Is this something that's important that I need to deal with right now? Is it acute emergency, an issue that has to be dealt with right now? And of course, if that's a point, that five seconds gives you a chance to, to at least propose what you're gonna to respond to as well as compose yourself too, without jumping right into it. This is the difference between proactive and being reactive in a sense. So to be proactive, it really is about planning. It's about being able to see, for, having foresight about what it is you're gonna say and do. So not to act right away, very important because this is where we make our best decisions. In fact, if we were to look at all the challenges with human beings today, it would really come down to that one word communication. But the other piece to it is that, well, why is it that we have a lack of communication? It's because we're reactive as opposed to proactive. It's never what happens in the world. It's never the world and the stimuli of life. It's what we do with it that determines our outcomes. And it's really that simple. And I, and I say that because I'm the kind of person who could complicate a grapefruit if you gave it to me. And I understand that clearly. So I need to make this very simple for myself for particularly, but to make a clear understanding. So the very first thing is you have to understand, do not just react, stand back and don't respond right away. If this is something that can be dealt with at another time and you need time to process it, say, hey, listen, you know what? We're, we'll get back to this. I can't process that right now. I'm not gonna work with that right now. I have too much, too many other things going on right now and I'm unable to really kind of deal with this. So let's get back to this and we'll talk about it again, okay? And that is where you have the, the power, really, the empowerment of yourself to be able to make re the right decisions. And the right decision means that you're not jumping into something, you're making informed decisions with each other. So let's go into the second point. If you're approaching this and you have some anger, it's really to check your anger. Why are you angry? Is there a particular part of this conflict that you have a role in that you may be feeling some anger about or regret about? Or is it something that maybe you did yourself? Or is there a resentment laying underneath there from this other person or the parties involved that you have that's just been kind of holding underneath and you haven't been able to kind of process that or at least certainly talk about it and, and get through it? And if that's a challenge, then check your anger. Make sure that you're going into this without being responsive. Again, the reactive piece. And that reactive piece is that you're going off of your autobiography, that's your history, your, your, your moods and your modes and your emotions and everything else about you for that moment and your past. 
This way you're going into it about the present problem. What is the situation? What's the problem? Fix the problem at the end of the day. And a conflict is about that opposing force. What's the issue that's at hand? Let's work on the problem. Not all of the behaviors, not all the characteristics of all the players, and certainly not all the personalities, but what's the problem? Get to the root of the problem. So number three is, well, what do we do next? We need to understand what is the outcome we want? What is our expected or expectations of the outcome that we're looking for, particularly in this? Be very clear about this. And also at the same time, try to understand what you believe the other person's interests are as well. You may have some clear ideas. You may have some vague ideas. You're not going to come to an assumption because that's something we don't do. We want to understand it first. But before you jump into it, it's to come clear with your own expectations. What do I really want to happen from this conflict? What is my outcome? What is the best case scenario for me? And I need to be very assertive with that. And we'll talk about assertiveness in a second. But I need to be assertive with that because it's something that's important to me and I'm not going to compromise. And we'll also talk about that in a moment. And this isn't about compromise. This is about making sure your expectations are clear about what you will and will not accept what it is that you would like to see happen, and then working it from that frame of mind. So it's really important for you to come in there with the expectations. What do you really want to happen with this meeting, with this, this, this session? What do you want to have happen with this communication aspects of whatever this conflict particularly is about? What do you want? What is your outcome from that? And number four, so once you've planned that you're going to necessarily have to talk about this at another time from number one, Remember, you don't jump right into it and you made a plan. Well, here's where you really do make that plan. So let's go back to the first one. You're not going to be reactive. Something is coming at you regarding a conflict. And you're like, listen, I can't work with that right now. I am doing X, Y, Z. But I'll tell you what, next Tuesday at 4 p.m., can you make time? I'll make time. We can spend a couple of hours, whatever is necessary for it. We'll turn our phones off. We'll, we'll get away from all of the noise and we'll just have a mano y mano to each other and we'll work through this and understanding each other. Okay. This is important that you plan this because nothing happens without that plan and scheduling something is also very important for relationship building because it gives the other person the insight to say, Hey, you know what? You care enough about me or at least care enough about solving this issue that you're willing to take time and plan it in the future for us to sit down to get together and to work through this. And that is an ultimate respect for each other. It really is truly a powerful gift that we can give each other, making that time, but making the commitment to it as well that, hey, listen, I really do care about this. Whatever this issue is, we can get through this. We can figure this out. And at least we're going to get the first steps going. So it's important for you make a plan, have that scheduled ahead of time so you know what you're going to be doing. And number six, this is where we talk about assertiveness, right? So what is assertiveness? Assertiveness is a confidence within yourself. It's a certain sense of knowing that you feel skilled, knowledgeable, you have a competency in a particular subject, topic, whatever the conflict may be. It's also of yourself. It's a, it's a self-assurance of who you are as a person. And you can present that way. And it's very important to understand your body language represents a big piece to this too. If you're coming at somebody and you're doing a lot of finger pointing and you're kind of going almost right into their face, that's aggressive. That's not assertive. And aggression is just that. It's something that is being more ego-driven and it's more power and control. It's more about, I'm just going to dominate every way I can. It's competitive and it's not effective, all right? Not at least in the communication world. In a sports world, absolutely, it's an absolute positive way of being successful is to have that competitiveness. But in world life and communications with relationships and conflict, it is not effective assertiveness is. This is, again, who you are as a person and you present yourself in that confidence level. And again, body language and how you present that, how you speak about it, as, as opposed to yelling or talking very softly so that somebody just thinks that you really are kind of wishy-washy. You know, that's a big piece to assertiveness, being able to present yourself at least in a full dynamic of who you are with confidence without coming across over the top or again, aggressive. This isn't about ego, it's about personal confidence, it's about personal respect for yourself. It's about believing in who you are here. I refer to this as our personal constitution and having a, a great strength in that and understanding. 
So number seven, we use I statements. And let's talk about this. I'm going to break this down in a few different areas. First, to be very clear, this is our listening end. This is where we have to listen to understand. And in our communication program, Unlocking Hope, we talk a lot about this whole entire process. There's a whole module that really discusses a lot of this. Listening skills and the ability for us to communicate effectively. And a statement goes like this, is that we listen with the intention to understand somebody, not to respond to them. So let me restate that. We listen with the intention to understand somebody, but not to respond to them. And again, this comes from the idea that we're listening from their perspective. We want to know it from their point of view, their reference, how do they see it? And we want to be completely empathic with this. In other words, we want to really just kind of close ourselves off our autobiography and our history and our emotions and our moods and everything else that sets us off and, and takes us backwards in many ways when we're having communication because we get into all these parts of our lives in the past that really sometimes have no role in that present moment. So the I statements are about that. I am concerned about this conversation because of X. I have an understanding about this, but I'm not sure if that's correctly, or I am concerned about your such and such, or I would like to understand more about that particular such and such. So if you're following my examples here, now the I statement is a, an active listening statement. We're listening with the intention to understand somebody and listening is a key piece here. It is about listening. Think about this from the biology standpoint, the human being born with two ears and one mouth. Imagine if we really approach communication and our ability to listen to each other with that ratio. Listen twice as much as we speak. If we approach with that mindset and that dynamic, we absolutely positively make a difference in, in our relationships because of just that one element, that communication piece to it too. So having the ability to listen to, from their perspective, and then you can make this as an agreement, going back to that meeting piece where you schedule this, you can say, listen, I'm, I want to listen to you. I want to understand everything that's going on. I want to hear your perspective. And I'm going to listen with absolute intent of understanding your perspective. And in fact, you don't have to finish until you know that you feel not just here, but you feel that I am actually getting you. And my only role here is to maybe paraphrase a couple of things and just to reiterate, to make sure I understand what you're saying clearly. And then once you understand that you feel understood, then we'll turn this around and then I'll have that same opportunity to do for you. And that's how we can get to the root of the issues in a sense. So that's what I statements are about. That's what the listening skill sets are about. And then finally, at the end, what do you do when you finish with anything? You thank somebody. You may not come to an agreement right at that moment. There may still be some underlying issues. There may still be a big issue with this in this conflict, but that may need to, you have to come back to. Maybe it's something that you can't work on right now. It's something you'll have to deal with in a future tense. Maybe it's something you just isn't, it's not going to work. You're not going to agree. We can agree to disagree agreeably with each other. And what, what that really means simply is that we're not going to give up our, what our expectations of what this end result was that we went, go back to our earlier point where we discussed what is my expectation and outcome. All right. We're not giving that up and going to kind of compromise because I don't like the word compromise. I think it's a mutual agreement. It's a kind of what they refer to as the win-win. I want to be able to get my part and I'm going to feel confident with that and I'm comfortable with that and you're going to get yours and you're going to feel confident and comfortable with it. And that's what we call a win. And if we can't come to that term, then we need to understand, hey, maybe we just need to, you know, we'll shake hands and come back to this another time. Maybe we'll revisit this in a few months or a few weeks or a few years. You know, it really depends on what the situation is. Or once again, maybe we just can't come to terms on this. Let's just, again, agree to disagree agreeably and shake hands, thank each other, be thankful to have this opportunity because it shows ultimate respect to the other person by being sincere about this, right? And thank you in, in Asian culture, somebody bows to thank, right? And they don't bow a little, they bow deeply to show true thanks. And at the end of the day, that's what you're trying to do. You're conveying that, that deep sense of thank you. I appreciate we had this opportunity to work through this, uh, whether we had success right now or not, or whether we are not going to have success in this and we can just agree to disagree agreeably once again and move on with our different journeys in a sense. So, so that is it in a nutshell. That is conflict resolution, which is a part of our anger management program that we're launching in a couple of weeks. And that program will in detail have a lot of things to deal with 
with conflict, stress-related issues, and specifically anger in a big way. And that's really what this is about, in a sense. How do we deal with our emotions? How do we check ourselves? How can we present ourselves appropriately, especially when there's an issue like a conflict, and be able to be successful with it without causing any other additional harm or creating other challenges, or certainly creating any deep-seated feelings with each other, in a sense. So I hope that you got something from this. And if you feel you had any value with this at all, could you please consider at least liking this video, if not at least subscribing to our channel. And I would really love to hear from you and hear a comment from you. If you have any feedback on this or you have some ideas that you would like to inject with this, I, again, I have been doing this for 30 years, but I have been able to get to where I'm at today because I listen with other people and I take a lot of great ideas and I put them together. And, and the truth is that not one of us has the one answer. We all have collective answers together. And when we put our ideas together, we come up with a greater idea that any one of us alone could ever do so by ourselves. So I'd love to hear your comments and again, your feedback on it. So I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your busy life, your busy schedule to watch this content. Again, I hope that you found value in this. My name is Bernie from Tiger Resilience, where we offer addiction solutions to offer for families and friends who have loved ones struggling with addiction, in addition to helping the person with the addiction. We also work on a lot with behavioral health including anger management, conflict resolution, conflict management, as well as dealing with communication skills. I'll leave a link below with all of the materials in there. We also have a checklist that you can have for free. And that checklist and worksheet is going to be connected underneath in our description here. And that will give you an understanding of conflict, conflict resolution, and how are you dealing with that particular anger in that situation. And it's a great tool to have because the more that we're informed with our own emotions and behaviors and how we think prior to acting out on it, the more control we have in our lives. So once again, I want to thank you. I wish you and all of yours the very best today. And I look forward to speaking with you in a future video very soon. Thank you so much again.